Joining us now, we're very pleased to be able to talk to John Kirby, White House National Security Council Coordinator for Strategic Communications. Uh, John Kirby, thanks for being with us. It's a tough day. Let me start with the hospitals. Even if Israel's claim that Hamas command and control is under al-Shifa, as well as under other hospitals, other Hamas units, even if that were to prove true, and my understanding is that the U.S. has not independently confirmed that intel, does that justify striking a hospital? Because questions have been raised by uh, General Brown, CQ Brown, and others, that even getting a couple of terrorists or a terrorist cell doesn't justify targeting a hospital. This is the extra burden that we've been talking about for the Israeli Defense Forces as they try to go after Hamas leaders. And you're right, I'm not going to speak about intelligence matters, but we know it's open source reporting that Hamas headquarters themselves in things like hospitals and schools, and they uh, have uh, tunnels underneath residential complexes. They put uh, the innocent people of Gaza at risk in harm's way just by how they headquarter themselves. Um, and it does create an added burden now for the Israeli Defense Forces. Uh, they have a legitimate right and a need, in fact, a responsibility to go after these leadership uh, of Hamas. But they also have to be mindful of civilian casualties, is particularly when it comes to a hospital where you have patients who may, they can't evacuate on their own. They've got significant health issues. And your reporter rightly talking about those young premature babies. I mean, uh, uh, they, are, they are victims of this as well, and they can't help themselves out of this problem. So the Israeli Defense Forces have that extra burden, Andrea, of how to, of how to deal with this. And I've been reporting uh, and filed over the weekend about efforts in the pediatric hospital in the north, Rantisi. We'll have more tonight on all of that. And the Rantisi hospital was shut down completely on Thursday after being warned repeatedly by the IDF to have all the patients get out. The prime minister said this weekend that they can be told to go to the south. They are being told to go to the south, safe zones. The problem is getting there. The roads are disrupted, even though in the, along those corridors, roads are disrupted. There is little or any cell phone. They haven't had power to charge their cells. It's very hard, even though yeah. the U.S., Egypt, Jordan, and Hamas have approved lists in Israel, approved lists of children to get out, cancer patients. But they can't even round them up, get them to assembly points, even those who've gotten to the south. Yeah, this is a very difficult situation, and there's no question about it. And it's hard to look at those pictures, uh, speci specifically of those little children, and hard to think about young pediatric cancer patients that uh, whose lives are literally in the balance uh, hour by hour, uh, not able to move themselves out of harm's way. And that's why we're going to continue to work with our Israeli counterparts to do everything we can to, to help make their movement safe and efficient and possible. The Israelis, as you know, last week, uh, made a, a, a program now of daily humanitarian pauses for some hours, giving three hours heads up and also improving and increasing the number of safe corridors. Now, you said some of those corridors are, uh, are, are not easy to traverse, and we understand that, which is, again, why we're going to stay uh, lashed up with our Israeli counterparts to see that they're doing everything they, they possibly can to allow safe passage for these people who are, who are in such dangerous straits. I know you don't want to talk about intelligence, but I do have reporting also that there is some concern and some pressure from the administration on Israel to produce more evidence about what they say is going on under the hospitals. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about our diplomatic conversations with our Israeli counterparts, and I'm certainly not going to get into matters of intelligence. Uh, I would just say what I said before. It's open source reporting. I mean, it's out. It's it's public in the public domain that uh, this is a tactic by Hamas. Uh, they do headquarter themselves in places of civilian infrastructure, whether that's schools or, or government buildings or uh, hospitals, certainly tunneling under homes. Uh, they deliberately try to peep place the people of Gaza, innocent Palestinians, between them and the Israeli Defense Forces, because they know uh, that the burden is on the Israeli Defense Forces to try to preserve uh, and protect civilian life. They know that, and, they, and, they're, and, they're, and they're deliberately putting these people in harm's way. I mean, we talk about the law of war, law of armed conflict, and I've heard people talk about war crimes. It is against the law of armed conflict to do exactly what Hamas is doing, tunneling and creating uh, human shields out of the innocent people of Gaza. No, and just to be clear, to, just to be clear, I understand that they've done that before. There's a lot of assumptions being made here, but I know at least that you don't have 
independent corroboration about these specific instances. But I understand well, you're not going to talk about intel. Yeah, again, I'm going to be careful about what I say uh, uh, around intelligence here. But again, it's it's common knowledge that this is a tactic for Hamas. They do this. They have done Understood. this for many, many years. What can you tell us about the suggestion from the prime minister to Kristen Welker that there could be a deal that there's some positive hope to hold out to hostage families? We don't want to hold out false hope to these suffering people. But I'll tell you, yeah, Andrea, we, we've been working this literally hour by hour since uh, since we knew hostages were taken uh, with our counterparts in the region. And, and some of those counterparts have direct lines of communication with Hamas, and you know that. Uh, and we're talking to them as well to do everything we can to get all the hostages released, including, of course, uh, the small number of Americans that we believe are being held hostage. Um, and I don't have any developments to speak to or announcements to make today. And as the prime minister said, and I agree with him, the less we say publicly, probably the better chances of success we're going to have. But I can assure you we are working on this very, very hard, and hopefully uh, we can make some progress here and get those folks back with their families where they belong. And the U.S. has now conducted its third round of retaliatory strikes against Iranian-linked sites in Syria. This time, notably, it killed several Iranians. Uh, deterrence doesn't seem to be working. Well, again, uh, these groups and the IRGC, the Revolutionary Guard Corps that works for the Supreme Leader, that funds and supports these militia groups, they got some choices to make. If they want to keep uh, attacking our troops in Iraq and Syria and keep threatening our facilities and the lives of our, of our folks in harm's way, then we're going to have to continue to respond and respond aggressively and appropriately to, to mitigate that threat. Uh, these targets were targets that went directly at the IRGC's ability to continue to provide capabilities to these groups. Uh, we'll, we, uh, we're not looking for conflict. Uh, we don't want to see any more attacks, but we've got to do what we've got to do to protect our troops and our facilities, and we'll keep doing that.